Oh my gosh. Keeping items. Um, the screens were kind of too hit and miss, so we decided to go with just our trusty old owl. Um, he's great, he's portable, and he's reliable, but his quality is not great. So when you are speaking, if you are doing a lot of speaking, I ask that you walk up towards the front of the room to the owl here. Or if um, you just have something quick to say, just try to project as loud as you can. Um, also keep in mind that the owl zooms in on people. Um, you would like to think it's just when you're talking, but sometimes it's just making weird faces, especially through me, it'll zoom in. So keep that in mind um, that this is being recorded. Anything that comes across the camera or the microphone is a matter of public record, and we don't necessarily need everyone to know how often we pick our noses. Um, we do have several people who are joining virtually. So if they um, want to just do a quick chat, I will try to keep an eye on the chat, um, but also stay muted unless you are speaking, in which case, if you want to have a turn, feel free to unmute and um, contribute. But if it is something quick, feel free to also slap it into the chat and I'll relay it. With that, um, any of the PowerPoint slides that we had, had prepared, we will not really be able to show since the screens are down, so just use your imaginations. And then with that, I will go ahead and turn over our June 12th LWEA quarterly board meeting to Gerald Villier. All right, all right. Uh, welcome everyone and welcome to all those that are joining us online. You missed a great meal. Debbie did a great job cooking and uh, we have order here in one door out the other and uh, <laughs> all went well, all went well. So, uh, first time back for how many, what, two years almost? been a long time so it looks great it looks great much better yeah much better we like it so all right okay. welcome everyone debbie please call roll i'll speed up here just a little bit closer okay Gerald billy here jim bolin kevin thinker casey burkholzer here emma busher present brian cannon here pat clay Mike Conrad. Here. Sandy Daters. Patsy Iger. Carolyn Jorgensen. Here. Mandy Martin. Josh McElroy. Julie Obermark. Here. John Perry. Lori Foreman. Here. Deb Reed. Denise Smith. Chris Stroll. Here. Here. Okay. Uh, Kim Taylor here. Carol Tracy. Um, Jason Warple here. Courtney Yaki. Not yet. Austin Spilling. We're one tour. Red. So there were a couple people that said that they were potentially going to be virtual. Um, Denise Smith said, I know Sandy Daters is having some phone issues and Courtney Yaki, so maybe some of them are. By the time we get to the budget, maybe. So, well, we shall see. Yeah. So let's hope so. All right, just one more. Okay. So as we begin, uh, for those of us, uh, any conflicts of interest that anyone knows of uh, this evening? Uh, if not... Let's go ahead and Jamie, do you want to introduce our guest speakers? Yes. Joy and Joy Fitz and Julie Obermark from Kaskaskia College are here to give a presentation on AIM that did have a very lovely slide deck. I promised you I saw it and it was nice. Um, so just use your imaginations. I'm going to use my very lovely slide So thank you for letting us take a little bit of your time and then let Joy use the PowerPoint. We can send yeah, a, I think so. Uh, we can send the PowerPoint out if you want to see it, but um, we'll get started and introduce you to a new program that Taskaskia is starting in the fall, and it is called aim and so i'll just give you a quick background and i'm gonna let joy kind of take it over but um you know for a long time 
in the United States. We have pushed four year degrees, um, and there's great benefit in that. But at the same time, some of the four less periods. You good? At the same time, some of our um, smaller rural schools, especially where we serve, oh, you know, in Kaskaskia, um, what happened when we did that is we pushed students into that four-year track and they took vocational programming out of the high schools. And so now we have manufacturers and um, industry partners saying, where's the workforce, right? Where's the, where's the kids? They don't know what we do here. And, and we heard this over and over as we sat at different round tables in this area, you know, we go all the way over to like the Metro East area, we heard it everywhere. And so Joy and I were sitting in one of the meetings one day and we said, we have got to figure out as a college, as a community college, how to reintroduce vocational programming to the younger students, to the next generation. Otherwise, we're not going to have a workforce. And if we don't have a workforce, we won't have industries that stay in our area. And so um, I know a lot of folks are familiar with the CEO program that focuses on the business model and entrepreneurship. And Joy and I said, why can't we do that for manufacturing? Why can't we introduce students at the high school level to manufacturing careers using a model like that? So it's very hands-on and it's kind of fun. And so um, it started out about a year ago and we brought an advisory committee together of industry partners um, throughout the Kaskaskia College District. And we said, what do we need to do? And they were very informative. And so AIM launches this fall at KC, um, and we have enrollment and uh, a lot of great things planned. So I'm gonna let Joy kind of take it from there. And So as Julie said, um, the reason we developed AIM was because we were hearing from all of our round tables, our community engagement meetings, that um, our young people were just not interested in the careers that um, our manufacturers were specifically posting. They were, they were having trouble finding candidates. So what we looked at was um, our economic development region and manufacturing is leading or emerging and almost in, in it's leading in economic development region seven and it's an emerging in um, nine, which is our southwestern counties. So that's why we put together um, the AIM program. And as Julie said, we sat down with um, we gathered some industry partners last summer and sat down and said, okay, we thought we knew what manufacturers needed. And we had laid out some courses that we thought would be good entry-level courses for them. When we brought our industry partners and our high school administrators together for the meeting, our industry partners said, well, what we'd really like to, to, for them to have is kind of a high level overview of manufacturing. So we went back to the drawing board and um, looked at why, um, what they were saying as far as like the changes in manufacturing over the last few years, um, the, um, the, the high level overview of manufacturing processes, quality improvement, um, safety, and we started working on developing curriculum based on that. Plus, one of the things that they mentioned was uh, a lot of students don't realize what manufacturing looks like today. So they think of it as this dirty, you go into this dirty, filthy assembly line, assembly line yeah. uh, facility, and you're doing the same thing every day, and they don't realize that you need computer programmers, you need engineers, um, engineers and information technology specialists. So there were so many different careers within manufacturing. And so the other thing we looked at is how can we um, showcase all these career opportunities that are within manufacturing? And our industry partner said, we'll come in, we'll help mentor them, we'll help um, tell them about these careers. We're gonna do some industry tours. And so that's how we started developing our program. Um, the AIM program design, it is open to high school. At first we said high school seniors, but then um, meeting with the administrators, they said we'd really like to offer this to the juniors as well. So they can start their, their um, career exploration in manufacturing. And then maybe their senior year, they can go into the workforce and do some cooperative work study 
or they could um, take some additional courses in manufacturing that they were interested in. Um, so it's open to high school juniors and seniors. Um, we have an application process at KC, just like the CEO. So students that are interested in applying for this, they fill out a short um, interest. They have to get a letter of support from a high school teacher or a counselor. And um, originally we set a uh, GPA for our dual credit. But after speaking with our high school administrators, they said we have a lot of students that we feel like would really excel in this program that maybe not meet that GPA threshold. So we said, we'll look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, <clears throat> we serve students from public and private high schools. Uh, it is dual enrollment. So the students are going to receive high school credit and college credit at the same time. And we will have, much like the CEO program where we have guest speakers come in and talk about different careers in manufacturing or careers fields and, and entrepreneurship for CEO. They're gonna do that with the manufacturing. We'll have industry partners come in and talk about that. Um, each student will work on throughout the entire year on team-based projects. And at the end of the year, they will have one team-based project they will present to the community um, industry partners and their peers, families. Um, and that will be like an annual show that will highlight what they've done throughout the year. There was a little bit, you know, I was gonna, one of the things that the CEO programs are do really well is they get kids to go out to do tours at businesses. This is just a little bit different with the manufacturing because we found some of the industry partners insurance companies won't let them on the floor if they're under 18. And so we are going to have to swap that just a little bit um, and bring the industry partners in to us into the classroom. Um, there are some that said, yeah, bring them out. We'll make it work. Um, but all in all, those insurance companies keep a pretty firm thumb on what can go on in the businesses and, and rightfully so. So. Yeah. The other thing, too, is that a lot of the industry partners, if they weren't allowed to come into the plant, they're starting to think about creative ways to introduce students to that. So whether they go through and they do like a virtual tour yeah. or um, if they can um, bring them in and not on the plant floor, but, you know, at least expose them to the different things that they they make and manufacture. Mars, Calcan and Mattoon will allow you to come in as long as you stay right by the wall and don't get past the yellow line. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we actually, um, I, I was sharing earlier in our consortium meeting that we have um, a grant where we do career workshops and we went to a manufacturing facility. They can't pass that line, but they can walk through and see what everyone's doing. So they're it, high school juniors and yeah. seniors, but they have to remember that single file that they learned in elementary <laughs> school, you know? Um, the other great thing about this, when we started developing this program, we worked with the Illinois Manufacturing Excellence Center. We, pre we presented this idea to them. Um, we presented it to some of our other um, community-based organizations, and they were very excited about it. So we did get grant funding to help support this program, and we were able to hire um, a facilitator, a program facilitator. She has 29 years experience. She has 29 years experience. In the manufacturing field. So I, we're really excited that we have a female that's going to represent females in manufacturing. Um, she has uh, worked for NAL. She's been in operations. She's been a, a project manager. So, and she's just very full of energy and we're very excited to, to bring her Energetic. On. The kids are going to relate well to her. Mm -hmm. She is um, spicy. Yes. <laughs> Um, we did, after we met with our industry partners, uh, we developed some curriculum. We sent that, sent that to Illinois Community College Board for approval. This is a one-year program that, as I said, students will be getting dual credit, but they will also receive a manufacturing technology certificate when they complete this. So when they graduate from high school, they're going to graduate with their high school diploma and also a manufacturing technology certificate. Um, they attend the, the courses five days a week in the morning. So they will be attending from uh, 5, 8.30 in the morning until um, 
And it's a 16 credit hour uh, program. 12 credit hours in manufacturing courses. And then we are putting in tech math, which tech math for us is uh, industry applicable math, I'll call it, right? We're not figuring out X, Y, or Z on a formula. It's stuff that the students would use. It's a little bit of geometry that they would use in cutting angles, right? And welding manufacturing. It's a little bit of um, calculations that they might use in, in CAD or engineering, but it's very applicable. And so when you kind of talk about the kind of student who might be interested in something like this, it's usually students who want stuff that's going to apply. They don't want to learn algebra two or calculus because they feel like they'll never use that again. I feel like I'll never use that again, but you know, um, and so tech math is something in some of our other um, industry programs as well. And students have done really well with being able to apply theory to, to app process then. So. Yeah. And the, the certificate that they earn is stackable. So we have some uh, manufacturing degree programs that they can use this as technical electives for their uh, if they decide to go on and in, into industrial technology or automation or even our welding programs. So, um, within this program, we are offering employability skills. That was one of the, the number one things that employers say. They want um, students to know about work ethic, showing up on time, um, communication, uh, critical thinking, problem solving skills. So we will be embedding those employability skills in the curriculum. They will receive a 10 hour OSHA general industry card. And um, in addition to learning about production processes, quality, and then just basic um, manufacturing maintenance. So they're gonna get a little bit of electrical, a little bit of robotics, a little bit of welding, a little bit of uh, machining in this program. And that was one thing too, I think our industry partner said, you know, like Joyce said, we had kind of picked up classes that we thought would be good. For the high school kids and you know I'm a nurse by background and enjoy been in education so they were they were quick to rip me apart as a nurse they said no Julie you don't know what we need um, and that's okay but you know they said we need an entry-level employee who can know a very high level like Joy said but they need to know high level from step one to the end. They need to know what it takes to go into the design concept. So they need a little bit of computer programming and CAD. They need to know what it cost us to produce that from step one till it is shipped out the door. They need to know about the logistics that it takes to get the product from manufacturing line to the end user. And so those are the kind of things that we had to go back and adjust a little bit to really include those because we didn't have some of those things in there. Um, but I think the model and the and the curriculum that's been developed is going to give them all of that. And then, you know, the, the last thing they said to us, give us an entry level person, let them us work with them for six months and pick pick the rock stars, right? And then we can send them back through an apprenticeship to do something specific. Maybe they really like welding. We'll get them back into welding. Maybe they really like, you know, industrial tech. We'll get them back into there. And then they can kind of groom them as an employee of their own um, in the student's area of interest and expertise. So it's a, it's a long-term commitment for the student with the employer. But it's also, you know, a benefit for the employer that they get people that they've had an opportunity to watch and kind of grow up over a six months to a year period. So. So um, I, you all received the uh, brochure and there is the courses, a list of the courses that we have developed and have been approved by Illinois Community College Board. Um, we have manufacturing safety, manufacturing processes, uh, quality and continuous improvement and maintenance awareness. And there's, uh, that's uh, also the, the tech map classes in there. Um, opportunities, as Julie said, this is an opportunity for not only the students to um, learn about manufacturing, but it's an opportunity for the employers to get to know the students as well and what their interests are, what their likes are. And it's kind of a pre-interview process. So they're, they're learning about them as they're going through the program and uh, finding out, you know, what, what, our future workforce, what what their um, what they want out of a career. Um, this is a pre-apprenticeship program type program, as Julie said. So hopefully, this will transition them into an apprenticeship program once they graduate high school. We have 
um, several manufacturers now that are offering apprenticeship opportunities and we cannot get the students to, to um, join that. I, we have a, a company in Jefferson County that's hiring 20, pre -apprentice, or pre 20 apprentices and they've only been able to uh, get nine applicants. So um, hopefully this good will- Good paying jobs, good paying jobs. Why is that? Yeah. That's a good question. And I think because number one, um, <laughs> students here manufacturing, and they have this stigma that manufacturing is kind of a dirty, filthy job. They don't realize all the opportunities that are there and the opportunities for advancement too. If they are familiar with manufacturing, most of them probably have a family member or somebody that they know that's worked there and maybe they have a preconceived idea of what that, that's like. So. so just to give you a little background, Kamari, so we have 17 high schools in our district and only six that don't have any kind of vocational programming related to manufacturing in them. Most of them. So 11 high schools have students going through that are never exposed to anything like this. So it doesn't matter what you say to them. When you say, hey, you want to do an apprenticeship? They're they're paying good wages. They're like, I don't even know what you're talking about, right? So that is kind of that, you know, backstory about why we're doing this. Some some districts have much bigger schools that have maintained vocational programming, but you know we have a lot of small rural schools. We have two very private high schools um, in our district, and they don't have this available to kids. So young adults doing career exploration aren't exploring these careers. They're just not. So. And I think a lot of times the kids don't understand or students don't understand our apprenticeship program with a two-year degree. Um, most of our manufacturing students make anywhere from sixty to $80,000 a year and sometimes can make over $100,000 a year um, with a two-year degree. So hopefully this program will expose them to those opportunities and those career pathways. Um, so this is uh, some key elements. This is uh, based on industry standards. It is competency focused uh, curriculum that we have looked at. Um, it's also simulated experience. So they are actually getting hands-on you know, experience and skills. So once they leave this program, they do have those entry level skills to either go directly into the workforce or continue their education. And um, again, it allows them to enter into our apprenticeship program. So, questions? Yes, ma'am. And one question um, Are your high school teachers teaching, or is it your college level faculty that are teaching? And it's just a question because we're looking at a model similar to this mm -hmm. for Effingham Regional Career Academy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, that will be starting in fall of 2024, and that's been a big discussion. We hired a facilitator. Mm -hmm. Okay. We hired somebody that was qualified to teach these courses. Now, if you have a lot of high schools that have qualified people, it could be something different. Again, we only had six of our 17 that had anybody remotely qualified to teach. That's why, you know, six of our 17 high schools have some form of manufacturing as dual credit now but 11 of them wouldn't have been able to offer it unless they hired somebody and they don't have the funding to do it. They're small, you know, small schools. So we hired the facilitator. Yeah. We hope that in the future that this program catches on and that high schools want to back offer, to yeah, locally. that we, they want to offer this, that they, they see the value in it. Um, and even if you know, it does grow that we have what, seven education centers, our district is pretty big. It goes all the way from Greenville to Nashville over to Salem. You know, so we're hoping that we can offer it at least mobily to get around to those high schools that maybe don't have the funding. To we do have that problem. So we have it at the Chris Technology Center, which is located on the east end of Centralia. And our farthest west high school said, we're not sending anybody because they, our kids can't get there and then get back in the afternoon for more than one class period. And even if they're on track to graduate, they almost need two class periods in the afternoon, like an English and a history. So we, unfortunately, those kids aren't coming. 
they're not coming just because of their geographical location. Um, and we would love to be able to hire two facilitators or we would love to be able to just to give this curriculum to that high school and say, implement it, you know, we'll do the dual credit. Um, but they don't have anybody trained either. So we're going to start with what we can and hopefully it grows yeah. and we can get it at the, the Nashville Ed Center to, to serve Nashville and Oakville students. But you have to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. So. Yes. But if anybody in this area wants to, to come and talk with the students, we would welcome them as well. You know, we know that there's a little bit of overlap in Salem in that, but we are not opposed for any industry partner who's trying to get future workforce to, to talk to students mm -hmm. in that district either. So, all right. Thank you guys for your time and listening. And Thank you. Thank you. Just to piggyback on this, um, tomorrow a new WIN Workforce Innovation News podcast episode will come out. And if you want to learn more about Carly Sanders, the facilitator, she is feisty. Check out the podcast episode and um, hear her perspective and all the great things she's got planned for this event, for this program. Okay, you want to join? Um, okay, and yes, we have Courtney Yaffe, board member, has joined, and then we do have <clears throat> Jeff Voigt and Josh Rowe from our CEOs are online as well. But we're good now, right, Debbie? For board, we are For good. For board, okay. <laughs> That's good. So that means we can back up to item two. And Bill Burke is logging on right now for CEOs. Okay, so that means we'll back up, since we can take a vote, we'll back up to item two, the approval of the last board meeting minutes, which was in, sent out. Uh, do I have a motion to approve those minutes as they were presented? So moved. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. 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 Thanks, Kim. Were there any additions or corrections to those minutes that anyone saw? If none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, well, we got our old distance taken care of. That's good. So appreciate the speakers very much. That sounds like a great plan. Yeah, you see high schools that back in our era, many of them had industrial arts yeah. and that stuff, but you need to go back. Great, good, good thing. So we move on. Who's still in for work? You're, you get okay. Okay, so the provider report. I am the supervisor at CFS, or I couldn't be here. So I'm going to do the uh, service provider report tonight. <clears throat> um, we have two new staff that we've hired for planners, one in the Coles County office, which started April 4th, and one in the Olney office, which started April 19th. So now we have all of our slots filled, which is wonderful. Um, can add a blanket has closed production in the Vandalia location. There were 13 employees impacted. Their first day of layoff was May 5th. This is a permanent layoff with workers from Vandalia, Mulberry Grove, Ramsey, Sandoval, and Hillsboro being affected. We all was notified of the closure after employees last day. An in-person event wasn't able to be held, but rapid response materials was provided to the impact workers. We have had several contact our office to uh, get on the dislocated worker, make sure they're eligible for the program. Um, we didn't even know that place existed until it until it closed down. So, um, but we have had people contact us, which is a good thing. Uh, Lakeland College performed fiscal monitoring the week of April 24. There was one finding which has been corrected. DCEO performed financial and programmatic monitoring the week of May 15. The purpose of the monitoring was to ensure compliance with the Workforce Innovative and Opportunity Act, the Trade Act, and its amendments, if applicable, to find any errors or weaknesses which could potentially lead to audit findings. The soft exit was held on May 18 with best practices and potential findings being discussed. The formal letter from DCO detailed the monitoring result is pending. They will actually send that and then that will be given to the board. Staff attended the WIOA legislative mandate follow-up requirements training on May 3rd and the title 
1B follow-up report requirement training held on May 9th. Staff continues to attend the Illinois Workforce Partnership meetings and the Illinois Workforce Partnership Performance Work Group Task Force meetings held monthly. Staff were busy this month of May preparing for summer semester at area colleges with new attendant enrollments and working with continuing we owe students in adult care and work youth programs. Classes began in the area on June 5th. As of May 31st, we have 224 customers receiving training and career services through all programs. 170 customers have been exited this program year. The total number served is 394, and the program year is July 1 through June 30th. At the end of program year 22 comes, the end, comes to an end, LWA is meeting or exceeding all the performance measures across adult, dislocated worker, and youth programs. Uh, people can go on the WIOA uh, or the EFS website and do a WIOA application. Um, if they live, if they're living in Clark, Clay, Coles, Crawford, Cumberland, Edgar, Effingham, Fayette, Jasper, Lawrence, Marion, Moultrie, and Richland counties. And uh, we have a lot of people that do that to go on, and then we contact them and have them come in and do the regular application. But they can go on the CEFS website anytime and, and do the information. So hopefully, uh, we got our allocations for next program year. So hopefully, we will be able to put a bunch of students in in the fall. Anybody have questions? All right. Thank you very much. Well, Appreciate that. So next up, Jamie, on your success stories, please. Yeah, okay. So our virtual attendees do get to see the um, slide deck so they don't have to use their imaginations quite as much as you guys do. But on your table, um, seating area, and you should have a successory packet. Um, a booklet rather, and if you would like an extra one or you don't have one, we have some extras up here at the front and I believe in that green box at the back. Um, but these are the submitted success stories from our career planners at CEFS. Each one you read, you're going to be like, that is the best one. I love it. And then you're going to read the next one and be like, oh, but that one's really good too. So good luck. Um, please read them all. Select the success story that speaks the most to your heart. And then I will have you guys submit votes. Um, via SurveyMonkey or by responding to an email. So tomorrow morning, please check your inboxes. You should see something coming from you before 10 a.m. Um, asking you to visit the link to vote via SurveyMonkey or if the link is just a little too hard to navigate, just respond to me what success story is your favorite. And then from there, we nominate the success story with the most votes to Illinois Workforce Partnership. And in October, they will have an award ceremony where all of the main winners from each Elwia will get to um, receive an award, have their picture up in front of the entire state. And it's just a really moving and fun event. And I would love to see one of our success stories, their pictures going across the, the um, projector up there on the stage and see them walk up there and accept their award. It's really cool. So if you could do that, please. By um, 4 p.m. on Thursday, June 22nd, that will allow me to get all of the votes together, and um, then Seth will be able to notify the winner, and we can get the nomination to IWP. Any questions on the success stories or concerns? And I will tell you on the the email I'm going to send out on the survey. I did mess one of the success story names. I am sorry Debbie did point it out to me and I did not get the chance to go back and fix it. So that is my fault. And I hope that does not detract from you wanting to vote for her because she's got an amazing story. Yes, she does. Oh yeah, you can vouch for that. <laughs> I can vouch for that. <laughs> yeah. Gerald knows her. So if that's Move okay. On Move on with your point. Yeah, go ahead. I am next on the agenda for fiscal agent report. I will try to stay on track and use my... Um, handy dandy little slide deck to keep me on track. Um, first, we want to talk about incumbent worker projects that should be in a core packet. 
Um, but just to kind of put it into perspective, on an average year, we have about seven incumbent worker training projects that Tony manages. Um, we typically budget about sixty to eighty thousand dollars per year for incumbent worker training. This year, so far, and we're right up in the last couple of weeks of the fiscal year, we have, I believe, it's seventeen incumbent worker projects serving over a hundred, or just at one hundred and seventeen individuals at thir thirteen different companies across the region. So this year has been intense as far as incumbent worker projects go. And we're anticipating uh, to continue into the next fiscal year. So as um, you see in our budget for the new allocations, we are planning 200,000 for incumbent worker training this next year. That's a significant increase. And we are confident that we'll spend it in the next two years. And we're pretty confident we will probably spend it in the next year. So I'm excited to see the potential to grow incumbent worker training projects and to see these local businesses grow, um, be able to ups upskill their current workforce and provide opportunities to those who might not normally have opportunities to get additional skills. So if you hear of any businesses in your region, in your counties that are looking to grow, um, they need to promote some people, they need someone to gain skills to make them more marketable in the workforce, send them our way so we can see if we can do an incumbent worker training program with them. Um, moving on to our formula allocations. VCEO did um, distribute the allocations for all the LWIAs um, back in May. The state of Illinois received about an 18% increase in their WIOA allocation. From there, all of the Elwias, I think with the exception of one, saw an increase in their WIOA allocations. For us, that resulted in about an 8% increase. Not quite on par with the 18% that Illinois saw, but I will not complain too much because an increase is better than a decrease. So for um, adult, we're looking at an increase of 0.4%. This year we were awarded or allocated $737,549. For dislocated worker, that did go up quite a bit. That was a 16.1% increase. So we have an allocation of $936,621,000. For youth, um, we also saw an increase there at 8.5%. So $849,545. So for a grand total 8.6% increase, um, our allocations overall were $2,523,715. Um, looking at the grant recipient budget versus the formula funding. So that operating budget that we give you that says Lakeland College on there, um, that we do track each year to show you how much that operating budget is compared. It's so much easier when I can show you the graph. Now I'm having graph and I'm having to explain it. Um, each year as the funding, formula funding may change, um, our operating budget for Lakeland has remained pretty steady. You could just, we'll get these slides out to you after the meeting and you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and then looking at it as a percentage of the, the overall budget, um, this year we are operating, our Lakeland budget is 15.3% of our overall grant. Last year it was 15.9% of our overall grant. So um, despite some increases in salary, for staff, we were still able to maintain, and we did increase travel a little bit as well. We were still able to maintain just around at 15% of our overall grant. Speaking of grants, we also currently have the apprenticeship expansion grant, the Navigator version of it. There's the intermediary side and the Navigator side. We currently have Navigator. And just so you guys know, I'm letting Sandy Daters in right now. Um, this Navigator grant was extended for us upon request to August 31st. That grant is what allows us to employ Nate Carlson as the Apprenticeship Navigator. Um, there, the way that DCO will be implementing this grant in the future, it's going to, instead of being a competitive NOFO, it's going to take the appearance more of a formula. So each LWIA will receive a certain amount dedicated for apprenticeships based on some sort of formula. 
I don't know what that formula is yet, and that will not take effect until next fiscal year, so July of 2024. In the meantime, from July 1st, 2023 to June 30th of 2024, um, they've done, BCO has done two different things. One is they're extending the expansion ship grant, but just for the intermediary option, and that's not us. I did apply for that just in case they had some extra, but they assured me that you're not going to have extra there. So what they've done instead is offering a Navigator 2.0 NOFO. That is due on June 15th. I will apply for that one so that we will be able to continue to have an apprenticeship specialist on staff. To go along with that change of just how the formula, the grant is dispersed, is also the CEO wants the apprenticeship navigator to take on business service roles and to not to be a specialist for apprenticeships, but also be able to be a workforce development specialist and be able to serve our business service team as staff. Because with all of the new initiatives with talent pipeline management and the work that goes behind those sector partnerships, data gathering and analysis, that there needs to be someone dedicated for that. So we will pursue grant funding for the Navigator 2.0 and we'll keep you updated as to how that goes out. The John Barr from DCO said that the intention was that if we get our application submitted by June 15th, that DCO should be in a good position to give us at least a commitment to funding by June 30th. They might not be able to get the funding to us by June 30th, but a commitment for funding. And that will be helpful as we have until August 31st on this current grant. And just to put it out there, Nate will be leaving us in late August as he is relocating out of state. Um, and I've tried to talk him into staying, but you know, <laughs> um, so we're hoping that we're able to get a new candidate um, sourced and onboarded mid-August or so, so that Nate has at least a week to kind of impart his wisdom and that we're able to not lose much momentum in the progress we've made with apprenticeships lately. Um, the registered apprenticeships in development currently, I will just list real quick, and if you have any questions, Nate can go into more detail, but he's currently working on a registered apprenticeships in healthcare, including uh, more RN apprenticeships, radiologic technologists, surgical technologist, certified medical assistant, then looking at building and construction, construction industry, he's looking at quarry technician and manufacturing, we have more industrial maintenance tech um, potentials in development. Nate, do you have anything that I missed since the last time I got an update? You did a great job. Thank awesome. You. Good job. <laughs> we have made tremendous progress in apprenticeships. Prior to us receiving this grant and having Nate on staff, we had seven apprenticeships, uh, approved registered apprenticeships in Economic Development Region 7. Last I checked, we were at like 15, 16, and then we have just what I listed off in development. So to lose um, anybody, but especially Nate, um, will affect our momentum, but it is paramount to me to do whatever it takes to keep us going forward because this has been so helpful to our employer partners and is definitely affording more opportunities and access to students and job seekers who might not normally have tried that, that journey down um, whether it's community college or another vocational training program. So it's exciting stuff and I don't want to stop. I'm not ready yet. Then I talked about talent pipeline management a bit. So Courtney Yaki, who is one of our board members and I believe he's joined us online today. He and myself have now officially been deemed um, talent pipeline management certified, which means we have completed the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation Talent Pipeline Management Academy. We've gone through the training of all six talent pipeline management strategies. We have done a, a capstone project as well and presented um, not only for the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation, but also for DCO as well. Um, so we can now facilitate anything and everything that is DPM. Nate has been talent pipeline management certified since last July-ish. Um, and then what we are doing currently is imparting that same knowledge to our business service team just in a more informal format. So um, training on what those six strategies are and really trying to equip 
our business service team to be able to facilitate TPM um, strategies and concepts to all sector partnerships and form more sector partnerships. I want to go over our DCO monitoring update real quick. Um, back on May 15th, we had an entrance conference with DCO um, as they were beginning both programmatic and fiscal monitoring of LEA 23 and CEFS. So fiscal monitoring were present on site at Lakeland College for the fiscal side, and then program monitors were present at CEFS on site for the program monitoring on May 18th, which was that next week. We had a soft exit conference, so that was just a meeting saying they're done on site, they're going to finish up virtually or remotely or however they do that. Um, and then today, this morning at nine o'clock on Monday morning, we had our official exit conference um, with a, uh, not really quite the official letter yet, but a preliminary findings report. And there were only four findings. We are contesting two of those findings. Um, one of which was fiscal, but it was um, more of, instead of a finding, it should have been a recommendation or an observation as it was pertaining to Lakeland's human resources processes that are in line with all things IRS and human resource necessary. Um, the finding did not quite, I think they were looking for something else than what they actually we're talking about. So there will be more information on that as we get the official letter out and we will have um, our board chair and then our CEO, head CEO sign off on that letter, correct? Maybe? Yes. I think so. Okay. So there will be an official report by September, hopefully. Last year it was a little, a little last minute, but we got it. <laughs> we owe a summit 2023 recap. Um, as of yet, I have not seen that anything was posted on the ICSPS website with the recordings. I did find some of the breakout session recordings on a Vimeo link that I don't think I was supposed to find, but I did. Um, so I will send that out to you guys to peruse at your leisure, but it was a really good summit. The, the theme was we are one workforce. Right before the summit, there was a talent pipeline management pre workshop, pre-conference workshop, and I was really impressed because we had um, Joy Fitz was there, then Courtney Yockey, a board member, Chris Stroll was there. Um, I felt like we had a really good representation of our area, even though we were in Peoria and they, there were a lot of other LWIAs there, but not with the strong presence that we had at that workshop. So that was really cool to be a part of. And I hope next year at the WIOA Summit that we see more of you or that you are able to join at least virtually um, because there's some really good information shared, a lot of good opportunities to learn of some best practices and promising practices out there that we could definitely take a look at and try to um, scale to fit our area. So on the horizon, just some dates for you to keep in mind. We have the Illinois Workforce Partnership Award celebration that I was talking about for our success stories is on October 12th. Board term expirations and recertifications are coming up in September. So be on the lookout between now and September. Tony will be reaching out to board members who are on track to expire to, um, we'll have our CEOs nominate new board members or reappoint them. And then all of those who are not expiring, but do have to recertify, you will be sent some form to sign, I'm sure. There's always a form. Um, regional plan for 2024 to 2028. We expect that planning and information gathering stage to start in the fall, so maybe October, November of this year. Um, at WEA 23 staff at Lakeland College is still experiencing summer hours. So we are closed on Fridays, um, I believe August 18th, we will be back to working Fridays again. So keep that in mind. And then just one more shameless plug, workforce innovation news. Um, in May, our average downloads went from about 95 to 160 downloads. So it is really hard to quantify how successful any marketing piece is, but that's probably as close as we're going to get for uh, a, a number as far as the podcast goes, but
But what to me speaks louder than that is the opportunities and the awareness that comes from those podcasts. And that's really hard to measure too. But one of the good measures is one, our podcast guests are being invited to be guests on other podcasts in their industries. So someone's listening and they're taking note and it's offering more opportunities for visibility and awareness. And then two, it speaks volumes when I have someone approach me and say, hey, I've heard your podcast. I have a really good idea of something we're doing that I would like to spread the word about. Can we be a guest? And I will be honest, the first six months or so, I was struggling to find people to be guests and now people are coming to me. Um, so if you have not yet subscribed, please do check out. I think we're on to like tomorrow. Joy's episode is going live. And I think that's episode 29. If we have quite a, a library of episodes. So anytime someone has a question about something, you can just shoot them the appropriate episode to go with. Hey, you want to know more about a Kaskaskia? We'll check out this, this podcast episode. And you don't even have to be watching anything. You can just listen as you're mowing the lawn or doing the dishes or anything like that. So we're on Apple, Google, Spotify, and Stitcher. And also, if you have things going on in your area that you want to talk about, that you need another platform to increase visibility and awareness, it only takes 30 minutes for us to have a conversation and record it. Let me know and we will get that out. Those episodes, they are ours. We can do whatever we want to with them. And I give them back to our guests and say, spread it with your network, use it to increase your visibility. And that so far has been really cool. Yes, it is episode 30, Aim for Success at Kaskaskia College with Joy Fitz and Carly Sanders. So it is. it will be streaming as of tomorrow, June 13th. Also, don't forget, check us out, share, follow us on our social network, share everything. Um, organic sharing is priceless. Um, so Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, just at LWIA23, and you should be able to find us. All right, any questions on that fiscal agent report or any concerns? Oh, what was October the 12th? That is the Illinois Workforce Partnership or IWP awards ceremony. So all of the success stories from all the LWIAs in Illinois, um, the winners will be at that ceremony. Thank you. I don't know where it's at. We'll probably be in Springfield, but I don't know if they for sure set a location. All right, thank you. Thank you, Jamie, very much. So we'll move on. To item eight, which oversight and planning, Mike. Wow. Nice job, Jamie. Yes. <laughs> you know why? That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but it was all good stuff. Uh, we met the um, we met on June 8th, last Thursday at 4:30. We went over the grant recipient financial aid reports from Debbie to approve them, similar to what you heard. From Jamie also today, um, the performance report from SEFs, we went through that. Um, everything like we discussed already today was uh, met or exceeded. Program fiscal monitoring report from Tony gave us the list like we have to do on an annual basis and approve all the programs. We went ahead and approved those programs. Uh, and then you will hear about the budget today also for 23. So I won't take any time for that one. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Up next, Lori. Thank you. This is my first time, so I'm asking for grace. Um, <laughs> however, I'm excited uh, to have the privilege to be in the spot of chairperson for our youth program. It's something that my entire life I've been involved in youth and um, am grateful that at AgriFab, uh, we have an incredible youth program. Uh, both high school and college age. So um, I look forward to learning more and sharing more. But the, what's going on with the youth committee right now is we're really in a, a reimagining stage, if you will, breathing new life into it and hopeful with what it's going to be in the future. So we actually had three uh, new members uh, that were invited by current members for very specific reasons as we continue to try to diversify um, our group and uh, those that will be supporting our efforts and, um, and the success in supporting our youth. 
Um, so Jamie did a great job going through the orientation program uh, with all of us. And even though some of us have been through the program before, it doesn't hurt to go through it again. And as Jamie stated, have our aha moments and our learnings from that. Um, there was a lot of conversation uh, around uh, that program uh, that came from the orientation itself and really what we wanted to do. And we all agreed as a team, uh, Jamie has put together some incredible training because we feel like that's next step for us to clearly understand what the youth committee, what the purpose of it is and what it is uh, that we want to accomplish. So we decided that a quarterly is too far out. Uh, because schools are going to be starting in August, and we want to make sure that we get out in front of it. So um, July 24th, uh, we are going to have a training meeting that Jamie is going to facilitate for us uh, with our group. Um, and then, of course, Elaine reported out on activities and programs for the for the youth here through SUFS, and also um, the current measurements and status in regards to um, how they're doing. And again, exceeding all she said, but one at that point in time. Um, and then we quickly had to get through because we were running out of time <laughs> as we do with the youth program uh, through the end. But overall, we're excited about uh, the future of the youth committee and what we're going to be able to bring to our 13 counties and those communities and, and service when it comes to that. Great job, Lori. Is there any questions for Lori? All right. Great job. All right. Okay, Kevin. Consortium. Consortium came to bed just at four o'clock today. Um, business service update. Maybe gave a detailed report on probably 20 to 30 items. Lori, <laughs> um, we probably get on our podcast next one. <laughs> we'll do that one, sir. Um, but just uh, one one thing I want to point out from that was uh, there was a roundtable, uh, a manufacturing roundtable in Epping, in Epping on April 25th. I had five manufacturers there, and it's really uh, led by those businesses and you know, uh, trying to solve those problems that the manufacturing field is having. Um, you know, and trying to uh, do the same thing, keep that going, and do the same thing with IT, child care, and health care in our 13 county region. So that's the goal, right, Jamie? That is the goal. The goal. We're working toward it. Um, MOU updates. Uh, Tony has turned in our MOU agreement to DCO on May 31st. Um, they will be getting back to us if everything's correct on it. One stop, stop operator report. Um, we CFS has hired a resource specialist from one cup. They have started a few months ago. Um, and there's going to be cross training in July, August, September, and October, where all the partners can learn about each other's services and how we can refer each, each other um, customers to each other's programs. Um, that's everything on that report, but I do want to put another plug for Jamie and her booklet. Please read through these. Um, staff and CFS did a great job of you know uh, writing these and trying to tell the story because the story is what matters here. Go through here and look how many single mothers are unemployed and are now working and making good wages. Um, and how many were on SNAP? So we're taking people unemployed on government assistance and we are training them and giving them an opportunity for. A great future. Right. And that's what workforce is all about. And that's what this is about is telling a story. Mm -hmm. So um, just read through it and let's spread the news. Jim could cut off a thousand more if you want to use the hand them out and spread the news of what we're doing. That's what that's let me what know before July 1st. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and it's not just giving somebody check to go to college. It's right. all the case management we do for them, hand-holding, getting them through the rough times. Um, on the front side, doing assessments and you know, you know, career planning. Okay, what do you want to do? What opportunities are out there? Um, and you know, a lot of our case managers, they're getting invited to these kids' graduation. Mm -hmm. You know, so and make that personal connection too. Um, so just yeah, take this and read through. 
um, and spread the word. Thanks, Kevin. And right. Yeah, I agree. You know, this is this tells a lot about what is done by everyone in the room, you know, but it speaks volumes. And, and like Jamie and I mentioned, all of these stories have a really deeper story. Everyone has a lot deeper story than what well, we're seeing this, the surface here of this. But uh, uh, I, I know personally one of these that did some work for us. She was on, on a landscaping thing and did work for us at our house. Four, three or four years ago and just got down, crawled under the house, did whatever she needed to do. And just, I mean, so yeah, but all of them have a story. And uh, but yeah, take the time, take the time. It's very good. Thank you, Kevin, very much. All right, <clears throat> executive report. Uh, we met on June 8th as well, had a very light agenda, uh, approved last year's minutes <laughs> from June of last year. And then we also had uh, uh, looked at the fiscal year for uh, this coming year, the budget. Um, we looked at that. The, we've done, when we looked at this, we're, unanimously are we recommending that the board go ahead and, and uh, uh, approve this budget. And I'll let Jamie get into the, the depths of it. But uh, before we do that, we do need a motion to approve the reports that have been given from Mike and well, Mike and Lane. And, and uh, Kevin, or oh, three, and, and Kevin, and uh, myself. So all those reports. Do I have a motion to approve those reports? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Kevin. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Thank you, Chris. All right. All, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay. We're all here today for the fiscal year budget. So to the point, I'm glad we have a quorum to be able to deal with it. We were gonna be in a bind if we didn't. So thank you for all those that joined online to, to make this happen. So Jamie, go again. Well, to save you all time, because I talk a lot, I'm gonna turn it over to Debbie because she says things right to the point. Go ahead. Okay, so I originally sent out the budget on Wednesday, but then Thursday evening, I forgot the revised one because originally whenever I put it together, I just have an estimation on salaries, and then it was finally released what Lakeland was proposing to go before their board tonight. So I then a quick revision, and that's what both the planning oversight and executive reviewed, and they were recommending for tonight. So the revised one had a 6.9% increase from last year, and the bulk of it is salaries and charges. There's a little bit of extra travel just in case there's a lot more conferences being held in person, but otherwise there's not a whole lot of changes. So um, if there's any questions on that, I'll try to answer what I can. There was also a second page. It just basically was the apprenticeship grant, but nothing really has changed on that one. I just wanted to note on here, just because they did a part of the team and he has paid out of the different grant, but as noted at the bottom, and like Jamie said, we're applying for a separate grant, so we really don't have numbers to really go off of at this point anyway. So, but the first page is the one that you are officially approved or after approval. So, all right. All right. Good. Thanks. So, to put this in perspective, when, when Jamie was giving a report earlier, it was about an 8.1% increase in the funding that we'll be getting. Which is just a shade under two thousand or two hundred thousand dollars. That's one hundred ninety nine thousand in change. So, but here we're getting eight point one percent more in funding, and we're only looking at a budget that's only like six point whatever nine percent. So, amounting to about twenty five thousand of that. So, uh, we want to, and as you said, it's true. It's I mean, and hopefully you all have looked at the revised one, the correct one. Okay, that's the one we're we're voting on to approve this evening. So, I mean, and, and as Debbie's already alluded, uh, the bulk of in salary. We got to keep good people. We got to keep good people. And, uh, and uh, I have no issues with this. And that's why the executive committee is, is highly recommended that we go ahead and approve this, this budget. Okay. So, with that, let's get a motion to approve the budget for fiscal year. Wait, wait. Do I have a motion? No motion. All right. <laughs> I'll do, can you do a second? Okay. Just a second. Okay. <laughs> All right. Appreciate it. Are there any questions on the budget? I know it's 
budgets are always those things that people talk about. This is pretty cut and dry. And, and I tell you, the, the three of them make, it, make our life easy with the work that they put into this. They really do. And, uh, and I appreciate it so much. But with that, we do have to take a roll call vote on the fiscal issue. So I'm going to ask Debbie to go ahead and do the roll call vote. Okay. Daryl Tilly. Yes. Jim Coleman, not here. Kevin Binker, not here. Casey Burke Holder. Yes. Kevin Busher. Yes. Brian Cannon. Yes. Mike Conrad. Yes. Sandy Davis. She says yes on chat. Okay. Yeah, Carolyn Jorgensen. Yes. Um, Martin, 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 Yes. Martin, 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 Yes. Martin, 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 Yes. Martin, and Courtney Hockey. Yes. Very good. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you all very much. So <clears throat> moving on, uh, item 10, election of next year's officers. Chris, are you taking care of that? I am. Okay. Um, I am part of the nominating committee along with Casey Bolthauser, who is on the Zoom call, and Carol Tracy, who's not here with us this evening. Um, we would like to nominate Gerald Billiou and Jason Morphle for the uh, next year's officers. Okay. So you agree? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good. So, <laughs> all right, based on the recommendation, I, I, I appreciate it. I really do. I've only been on a year as far as uh, the chairman. But like I said, once I'm, these three make my life so easy, I don't. Now with emails, you just. A lot of stuff to sign, and Tony sends me tons of stuff just to sign, send back. So it, it makes our life easy, you know. But uh, anyway, so with that, we have the motion uh, or a recommendation. We don't really have a motion to accept uh, as continue on with myself and, and Jason as a chair and vice chair. So do we have a motion? Thank you, Mr. Okay, again, do we have a second to that motion? I'll second it. Okay, Lori, second the motion. All right, anything? Any discussion? Anyone says, no, I want to be here that you're going to raise their hand. You're thinking no one from the floor is going to I haven't seen anyone. <laughs> okay, with that, that doesn't need to be roll call, right? We just need to, all in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. All sign. All right, I appreciate your trust in Jason and I uh, for, I another, for another that. year. So we'll we'll try to not let you down. Okay. All right. Uh, all of you must in your packets on next year's meeting schedule. So that so you you were able to see that. Uh, are there any other business or anything that anyone wants to mention? Opportunities we to share. Vote on the schedule. We need to vote on action, or required. action required. Action required. Action required to the schedule. I'm sorry. Thank okay. you for that. Okay. All right, so we see the schedule. Do we have a motion to approve the schedule? Somewhere. Sure. Chris has made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, thanks, Mike. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, thank you very much. That was the last item we needed action on. So then we'll move on to other business. Anything anyone has to say? <clears throat> Remember to share an opportunity or anything? I, I would like to make a comment. On yes. Our, so, do we put this on social media where people can see these stories? And... The EFS on their social media, they do feature each one of those success stories. Mm -hmm. And then I also on LVA 23 Business Services social media, I think I normally do it in the summer and schedule out for a success Saturday or success Friday. I can't remember which one, but I feature one each week through the summertime after this goes out and is voted on. So yes, it will be on our website. It will be on our social media. Um, and I am open to exploring new ways of getting the word out there. Um, last year, I had a conversation with Lakeland's NPR department. Um, but I know because some of these students are not Lakeland students, it does get a little hairy with what schools want to put out announcements or press releases. So if there's any ideas 
or potential venues for me to get this out, please shoot ideas my way. I would be happy. I think we could do so much more with it than what we do, but I have not yet come up with a super novel idea on my own because I'm not good at that. I don't part. know if we've ever allowed the public to vote. Um, I don't think we allow the public to vote. We just keep it to the board, but I think getting these success accessories in front of the public is from a marketing. Yeah, experience. we need to do more with it. Well, I have seen mm -hmm. I've seen information about our group uh, about Leoa at uh, the Salvation Army in Mattu. Oh, yeah. They have a board with pamphlets and stuff. Awesome. I was yeah. I said, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Good. All right. Any other comments? All right. Any any public comments? If I want to make a public comment, pertinent to LWE and not just anything, Todd. Okay. <laughs> pertinent to LWE. All right. If none, uh, do I have the motion to adjourn? Anybody want to adjourn? Y'all want to stay around a while? CEO meetings next. You want to leave? <laughs> so we get a motion, a second to adjourn. We'll be good. So okay, Mike, Lori, you second, second it? it. All right, all in favor, say aye. Thank you all for coming. Until <laughs> September. CEOs. All right, CEO stay. Get a hang around. Those who are joining virtually, who are chief elected officials from their counties, please hold on. We will start the CEO meeting in just about two minutes. So Josh Rowe, Bill Burke, um, Jeff Voigt, if you guys could stay on the line, please. Thank you Thank all you. for coming tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for that. Thank Congratulations. How are you That's what's in order. Or with them. For sure. And then if the owner has to come from Cascadia, then anything I can do to promote that. Yeah. Like to honestly, the other one. Yeah. I'll take your bet. I'll touch base with you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yeah. I'm excited for anything. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Thank you. Safe drive home. Grab something for the road. Uh, I'd have There's to more brownies, I'm sure. Have to do that door, yeah. It's all right. I can tell you. Come on. <laughs> all right. Yes, I'm going to move this over just a tad bit to pick up right. my face clearly for yeah, everybody. Just, whoops, stand up over there. Or... No, you can stay where you're at. I think it'll reach now. Okay. okay. All righty. Um, Welcome everybody. Thank you for staying. Do we have ooh, we hope we've got yeah, many. Yep, we have um Josh Rowe, Bill Burke, and Jeff Voigt joining us online. Okay, so I guess we do need to do the call then, please. Yes. Tom Beer here. Jim Bowler. Jim Brewer. Here. Bill Burke. Hey. Here. Joshua Dobbin. Joe Goodman, Kenneth Gray, yeah. Jacob Harris, Nancy Purdy, here, Joshua Rowe, here, Debbie Smith, Jeff Boyd. He is here. Um, Jeff, to unmute on the phone, I think it's star six, um, but he is on. It's just a little harder to unmute from the phone. And Jacob Warble. Here. Hey, we have four. Great. All right. Um, hope you had a chance to uh, review the minutes, and um, I would need a motion to, if everybody needs to uh, look them over. Make a motion we approve the minutes from the last meeting on March 20, 2023. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. All those in favor of approving the minutes from uh, March 20th? Say aye. 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 Um, negative, same, same sign, please. All right, number three, 
Do we have uh, any conflicts of interest? Hearing none, um, we'll move on to four, the signatory authority update. Uh, Jamie? Since our last meeting, um, Lakeland has not signed on behalf of the board or the CEOs. Um, we do anticipate um, when our official allocations come through that Greg Nuxel will sign on um, your behalf, but as of now, there's nothing. All right, uh, thank you. Number five, the budget approval. The budget was just approved by the board, and so it is up to the CEOs to agree with this. Um, do I have a motion to approve the, the uh, budget? So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. And if you don't mind, I just want to take a moment because I know we have a couple new CEOs online with us um, to just remind you guys how important it is that the CEOs are here for the budget uh, meeting because ultimately fiscal responsibility falls on the counties. So as county board members, um, that is why your presence and attendance is so vital as any time, but especially for June's meeting. So thank you for being here. It's very important that we in our counties um, know what we are have agreed to obligate to the group and to um, get the money in in time to help them out <laughs> in a timely manner. All right, uh, let's see. I think um, we were looking for um, a roll call on that. Okay. How here? Yes. Uh, Jim Burr. Yes. Bill Burke? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Josh Rowe? Yes. Jeff Boyd? I'm going to guess he says yes. Um, He got knocked off, but he oh, is yes. trying to log back in right now. Uh, it looks like, Jeff, Um, it looks like you got disconnected. Are you back on now? Can you hear me? I can. We are taking roll call vote for approving the budget. What is your vote? Yes, I I vote yes. And I voted yes on everything else. My phone just wouldn't let me uh, do anything. So I apologize. No apologies needed. It is weird when you call in on the phone. I just appreciate you listening in and participating. Thank you so much. Yes, you're student. welcome. All right, okay. number six, um, board attendance report and reappointments, Jamie. All right, so I think I say this just about every time, but there's a direct correlation with the um, amount of activity in each county and the participation of the board member um, representing that county. So to keep an eye on your appointed board members to ensure that they are attending, um, meetings regularly. Life happens. I understand that. We are, I am committed to offering this hybrid option for until someone tells me I can't, which I don't think anyone will. So that in cases where life happens, we're able to still at least get business done. I do know we are a long drive for a lot of our region. Um, so just anything you can to encourage board members in your counties to attend meetings and to continue to advocate and spread the word of WIOA. Um, as of right now, there are a couple board members who are, are not really participating or engaged, and they just also happen to be up for expiration in September. So Tony will be reaching out to you with who those board members are and to see if you have anyone else in mind or to offer our assistance in what we can do to help you find a new board member. I will let you know, you guys know your counties better than we do. So we're here to help in any capacity we can, but it is, we're limited because we don't have necessarily the same connection that you guys do locally. So Tony, do you have anything to add as far as expirations go? Not, not really. The, the CEOs that are here, Todd, you got Sandy Dieters is up, but I'm going to say she's probably going to stay because she's just, she's Pretty new. new. Yeah. So, um, and Jim Brian is up this year from North County, uh, and he's fairly new too. So as long as he doesn't have anything going on, I'm pretty sure he'll probably want to be reappointed. 
He wants to ride home tonight. He will. Yeah. <laughs> so, but the other, uh, everyone else, uh, this is recertification year too. So I'm going to reach out to all the board members. They're going to have to fill out a profile form. Actually, all fill it out. They just need to sign it. But as far as reappointments and actually finding somebody, the people in this room, it, it's Todd and Jen. So, and I have a feeling both of them are just going to say what reappointment. So, thank you. All right, number seven, next year's uh, meeting schedule. I do have one question. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, the committee participation. Is that updated? Because I noticed uh, it says none on a lot of them. I know some of these people are on are committees. I mean, am I not reading that right? It might not have been. I know uh, that. Dr. Lori Foreman, uh, she's on mute. She just got, so I will update those. The problem, there's not a whole lot of people that do participate. Well, that's what I'd like to see change. So, but yes, I'd like, like to see the people in the private time. sector participate um, in committees, but get them to show up would be tough. And it is. Because it's almost ruled by public. Or, yeah, public yeah, so like the consortium committee really is the public sector people. It's not even private sector because that's all of our partners. The only committee we really have is the youth committee. And that's kind of revamping right now. And then planning and oversight. Planning and oversight is really where everything happens. I mean, you were on it at one point. So, I mean, that's that's where everything happens. So if we get more people on there, that's where all the action happens. The bad thing is trying to get too many more, too many people on there. And then you, you don't the show more up. you, yeah, they don't show up, then you don't have form. And so we're trying to get people on there that we know are going to show up. And uh, it's very unfortunate, but. I mean, when Jerry was around, he wanted everybody to be on a committee. I'm like, no, we, we can't do that because we'll never get anything done. We'll never have a forum. So uh, we try to limit it as best we can. But yeah, you're you're exactly right. We like to see everybody more private sector people on the planning and oversight because that's the business led committee. Yeah, it's hard to say. Ago, what? I mean, it seems like everybody was on a committee. Yeah, well, we had more committees back then. We had a planning committee, had an oversight committee. So those are two yeah. different committees. And we had a, a claims and audit committee at one point. So we've combined all the duties of those committees into the planning and oversight. And then the youth committee, that's why we reorganized because having 51% of it be industry, it made it to be very large. And then we did not hit forum for like four or five meetings in a row. And that's when we said we need to reevaluate who's on this committee and that they really have an investment in this committee and not just showing up to the club. But you're absolutely right. We cannot be a, an employer-led board if our committees that are doing the action aren't mostly employers. So um, we will look into getting more of the private industry partners into the planning and oversight committee. Any suggestions? No, I just <laughs> are you volunteering? I'll work on it. Yes. You ever work with Casey Summers? In Mantle? I have not, no. I just wonder if he might be interested. So Keith? Keith? Or... That, that's what I meant. Keith yeah. from KC Summers. Yeah, he can be very well. Might be. You know, he's a busy man, too. But he's a he's... very busy man, but he's very generous mm -hmm. um, for a lot of projects in the area. So I don't know if he would be someone to tap. For yeah, them. We, will, we can absolutely check into it. I know he uh, hired some of my students when I had the STEP program at the high school uh, for detailing and other things. All right, the next one on the item, uh, the agenda here is number seven, next year's meeting schedule. And uh, you, this calendar is in the board packet. Um, so the next meeting scheduled is September 18th, us, uh, December the 11th, and next year then March the 18th and June the 17th with the approval of this board. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, do have a second? Sure. Thank you. Um, okay, looks like uh, we need to, <laughs> Have a, a vote on this. All in favor? Aye. 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 opposed? Same sign. <laughs> Number eight. Thank you. 
Motion approved. So any old business? New business. I have a question. Yes. Statements, are we required, and I've been on the board a long time for CEO, are we required to do a statement of economic interest? Nobody's ever asked me to do one or anything, but all the other boards that I'm on, economic development and everything else, we have to have a statement of economic interest filed in the county. Well, we do that in the county. And since we come from the counties, I would assume that well, for the CEOs, no, because I think that that is covered. Like you said, I have to do one as a as the administrator of the grant at Lakeland. I have to do one every year and send it into Coles County. You're cutting out of it. You're cutting out of it, but check? yes, I will me? double check. I can hear you. Are you right. accountable? The yes. fines are very, very tough. Okay. Nancy says that county board members have already done that, and it would have been due May the first. You could just add the title to oh, the I, Nobody sent me one, but the other boards that I'm on, other than the county board. The the uh, the uh, directors or the people that that uh, that handle the meetings and everything else send that out to the board members to make sure they get it filed. Nobody's ever done that. You might check with your county clerk. I I I filled mine out and uh, they fill it out for me, but they don't show this as as a position. Because I think this, since Lakeland is the actual fiscal agent, the grant recipient, Lakeland has to fill that out. So they have, it comes to me and I have to fill it out and submit it. And we're statutorily well, they haven't, to this board. They haven't sent it to me. Nobody sent me anything. Well, they just have me do it for Coles County. But okay. so what you're saying is I should double check that I shouldn't have to, maybe I need to do that for each county in the 13th. I, well, think I, I don't know. I think because I think because you are a CEO, it's statutorily uh, mandated that you serve on this board. That is going to be part of the county um, paperwork that you okay. do, and it, that, that would cover that because it is statutorily ordered that we serve on this board. I'll double check, but like I'm on the Eastern Illinois uh, Economic Development Corp. And they provide that, the executive director provides that to all the board members. Because we have to file it in the county. We have to file it in Champaign County because that's where that board is, is based. And I'm just wondering if we don't have to file in the county that where you guys were, where everything's based out of. Where did you file? I'm just the asking. I'm not trying to make problems. I'm just, I just want to make sure that we don't get caught up on something sometime. Okay. Just check with your county clerk. That's where the rest of us had to file <clears> our <throat> paper. They would put the title of township and county board on top. So when I filled out one time, it was done for both. I mean, maybe the county would add four courts on top. Well, I'll check, but I, 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 I think the East Eastern Illinois, who was the grant, would have to provide that just like the other two boards that I'm on. But that's fine. I'll double check and I'll call you if they don't. Because I think when you're stationed in at Eastern, that's where it has to be filed. Because I have to file other things in other counties when I'm on the mem when I'm a member of the board. I will double check with. Um... Lakeland admins too. I just wonder if because it runs through Lakeland, if it's um, just minimized to just Coles County and that's why you're not having to do it for the other counties. But I'm going, I will double check and do some digging to ensure. Well, that one, like I said, I'm on one board in Bloomington and one board in Champaign and I have to file in those counties, even though right. I'm based out of, okay? 
So I wonder if it might just be dependent on who the, the fiscal agent is. Mm -hmm. And if the board is the fiscal agent, that might be why you're doing it as opposed for us, our board is not the fiscal agent, Lakeland is. I'm I not sure. No idea. Okay, I will just, I will do some more digging so that I can understand it better and let you know for sure. Okay. And I'll double check with my county, okay? Okay, thank you for your uh, question there. All right. Ed Oh, that's that. a good one. Yeah. That way. Um, any other old or new business? Number nine, public comment. And number 10, just closing remarks, safe going home. And do I have a, oh, next yeah. meeting, September 18th. Question, is there a question? Um, As they number say, see you in September. <laughs> See you in September. The, the song. Yes. All right. They're over here singing it. You're not the only one, Jeff. <laughs> well, did we get a. Oh, okay. we don't need a vote on that. Though. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I move Thank we adjourn. We're going to adjourn just because right. you said so, Jeff. Thank you so much for joining in. I really appreciate it. You helped us meet. Yeah, this happened. All right. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>